by the power invested in me by BookTube, I hereby absolve you from feeling like you have to read the following books. Hello and welcome back to BookTube and welcome to another list video in which I decided I would list 10 hard books that you don't have to read. I titled this, Don't Read These Hard Books unless you want to. And it's that unless you want to thing that I think is kind of important to keep in mind uh, when watching this video or thinking about these books. Now, obviously these are books that are hard books. I think that lots of people will tell you, uh, will you need to read. Lots of people will believe that these are books that must be read in order to be considered a serious reader. Uh, and I have problems with the idea of, you know, serious reader. To begin with, I, I don't think we should be classifying ourselves as readers because sooner or later we are saying that some readers are better than others. And doesn't that just sound a bit ridiculous? So I've come up with a list of 10 books, 10 books that people think are hard to read, hard to understand, indecipherable. And I just thought I'd talk about those books real quickly and then my thoughts about why I don't think you need to read these books unless you really want to. So the first book on my list is Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. This is a book, essentially, it's a really big book, over a thousand pages. It's a book, essentially, which kind of centers on the existence of this movie, which is so enjoyable, entertaining, that you watch it over and over again, and as a result, you die. You essentially neglect everything else to watch this movie. It pulls in threads from all kinds of places. Tennis camp, uh, let's see, a group of drug addicts uh, who are in various stages of recovery in Boston, a group of uh, Quebecois uh, terrorists uh, and their activities in Canada, and all these other groups are, are kind of pulled in. And it is, you know, can be a fairly engrossing read from time to time. It comes with a whole lot of uh, footnotes, uh, see, yeah, a whole lot of endnotes actually, or footnotes that you can read along with it that give greater definition and explanation to it. And you know, when it came out, it was considered to be this great new work of literature. I'm just gonna tell you, I, I don't think you have to read this one. Uh, as is true with all these books. The second book on my list is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Uh, this book essentially follows five, I think, storylines which are tied together kind of tangentially by the existence of this piece of music called Cloud Atlas. We follow a man who's on board a sh sailing ship, I think returning from Australia, and you know, how what happens to him and how the song is there. Uh, we move forward to, I think, uh, a young composer who is apprenticing with another composer who comes across this piece of music. There is a, I can't remember, a conductor or some kind of person who appreciates music who is in a retirement home or in a sanitarium. Uh, in the song, it goes to a reporter who is, you know, in danger. And then it flat, then we're in the future, I think. And there is uh, what I'm going to call a clone character who's having an awakening. And then there's this kind of dystopian future bit as well. It is uh, enjoyable to read at times. And, and I'm going to say, I liked reading Cloud Atlas. I liked it. Did I get all of it? No. Do I think you have to read Cloud Atlas to, you know, at any point in your life if you don't want to? You know, no, I don't. Third book on my list is 2666 or 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. This uh, is a book that was published posthumously and it's probably its reputation uh, is in part based on the, the violence of it and how it depicts violence, particularly violence against women in Mexico. Uh, it is an involved story, essentially kind of centering around the existence of this or the whether or not this German philosopher whose last name is Archimboldi is alive and we kind of follow some characters in their quest for him, seeking him out uh, and other characters in their uh, dealings with various things that take place in, in Mexico. As I said, there's a section called, I think the section or one about the killings where there's just this mind numbing uh, list of killings of young women, women uh, in Mexico that go unsolved and uh, uninvestigated. And then it kind of wraps up in a really vague way. Uh, again, I, I enjoyed reading 2666. I, didn't, I didn't, don't think it's a bad book. Do I think it's a book you have to read? No, I don't. Uh, number four on my list is Ulysses by James Joyce. Now, if you've seen my first video, you know, which says, uh, don't read these classics, uh, you know that I put on that list, uh, Portrait of the Artist is a Young Man. And now I've put Ulysses on a list of hard books you don't have to read. And I've read Ulysses, I've read it twice. Do I understand all of it? No. Do I have any desire to do the deep research necessary to understand all of it? No. 
because I have a feeling that is, you know, a whole PhD in and of itself, and I still wouldn't understand uh, all the references. So I just kind of read it twice and got the impressions uh, that I got. And I, I kind of have a tendency to think that maybe that might be the way to read it if you do choose to read it. It essentially takes place in one day in Dublin, uh, June the 16th. Uh, and we follow one man, Leopold Bloom, essentially, as he goes through his day. And it's kind of loosely based around or connected to the Odyssey uh, by Homer. And, you know, it is famously difficult to read. It's read, written in all kinds of different styles, stream of consciousness. There's a section that reads like a play, etc. And so, you know, it is a really modernist work. And it is intentionally, I think, uh, created to be somewhat obscure and difficult to read, which means I don't think you actually have to read it. Number four on my, excuse me, this number, yeah, number five on my list is Paradise by Toni Morrison. This hurts me uh, as much as putting, you know, Ulysses on the list uh, because Toni Morrison is just a great, great author. And, you know, I, I say all the time that Beloved is, I think, the greatest American novel at the very least of the last half of the 20th century or the last 75 years. Uh, it's, it's that good. And Paradise is a good book, uh, but it is incredibly complicated and is incredibly stuffed with allusions and biblical allusions. It centers around a, uh, a black community in Oklahoma uh, or Kansas, I can't remember which one, uh, which has been established by a, a group of black people escaping from uh, the Jim Crow South uh, in the years after the Civil War. Uh, and then they, they come to kind of enforce a really strict set of rules for their society. Uh, and when those rules are violated, violence takes place. Uh, and then, you know, what we see then carried out or through the rest of the book is kind of how that all plays out and the effect it has on the people living uh, in that community. Uh, a really good book, but, you know, I saw Kim at Middle of the Book March who loves George Eliot uh, DNF this book for the second time. And I thought to myself, you know what, that, that means to me that Paradise is definitely a book you don't have to read. Uh, and I applaud Kim for coming to the decision that she didn't have to read it and DNFing it even though I love Toni Morrison. Next on my list is Foucault's Pendulum uh, by Umberto Eco. This is the only book on this list I haven't actually read. I've read about 120 pages of it. <laughs> it involves a secret plot society kind of group who are attempting to do something which has something to do with a computer program and they're not believed and investigation takes starts taking place and that's when I kind of just lost patience with it. It was just to me, too involved, too intricate, and it didn't, wasn't something that held my interest. And so I put it on this list as a book you don't have to read, even though I do know a lot of people uh, who really love the book. Uh, similarly, I would say uh, number, what's this? Yeah, similarly, number seven on my list is Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. Uh, again, this is a long book, which is incredibly confusing. It has a lot of disturbing stuff in it. And let me just say it, it involves London during the Blitz, particularly as it involves the V2 rockets. And one of the characters, it seems to be that whenever he has sex, that's where uh, the V2 rocket's going to land. And then it shifts from that kind of discussion to uh, Pinamundi, the place where uh, the Germans were working on their rocket uh, science and, and nuclear programs, I believe, uh, centers in German uh, society, perhaps before uh, uh, the Nazi takeover. And it, it's just, it, it's one of my friends said a long time ago, if you read this book, you're going to get your head full of stuff. And I'm not sure that it's going to fill your head with things you need to to have in there. So I put this on a list of, of hard books you don't have to read. Uh, eight on my list is In Search of the Lost Time by Marcel Proust. I read the first volume of this. I have, my edition has three volumes. And so I read Swan's Way and Within a Budding Grove. I think those are the two uh, big sections that are in the volume I had. Uh, it is intricate. It is detailed. It's essentially one man remembering all kinds of things about his childhood and writing them in almost a stream of conscious style, which is incredibly detailed and flowing. And I'll tell you, the writing sometimes is beautiful and the image it creates are beautiful. I have no desire to read the next two volumes. And I know this a lot of people really love um, Proust in Search of Lost Time. I think I got all out of it all I'm gonna get. And if that kind of read uh, doesn't sound like something uh, that you'd be interested in, uh, you know, you can skip this. By the way, it's set in France and sometime in I guess the early, uh, late 19th, early 20th century. And so it has a lot of those things going on uh, as well, uh, which, you know, I found to be kind of interesting, but uh, you might not. Number nine on my list is Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Uh, this is a book uh, set uh, in the border area between Texas, Mexico, New Mexico, in which a group of filibusters are essentially going across the Mexican border and killing people in an attempt to probably start some kind of a war so that 
uh, Texas or they can annex territory. It's incredibly violent. Uh, violence against women, violence against children, violence against animals. Uh, there is an iconic character in it called the Judge, who's this big figure uh, who seems to live forever and knows everything. It either represents chaos or evil, whichever one uh, you want to go with. Uh, and then his kind of contest to uh, perhaps went over the kid who is, if not good, at least represents, you know, hope uh, in the future. Anyway, uh, it's an involved book. I think it's an American classic, but I don't think it's a book you have to read. And then my last book on my list is the one that hurts me the most, and that's The Sound of the Fury by William Faulkner. This is my favorite book. I'm not going to lie to you. This is my favorite novel, I think. I, I go back and forth on this all the time, but I've I've read The Sound of the Fury several times, not exactly sure how, how often, and I just love the way it works. I love Faulkner's writing. I love how he shifts between the different narrators and how the, uh, the narrator's voice shifts from Benji, a mentally impaired young man, to you know, housekeeper to the other people, uh, to Quentin, to the other people in the, in the, in the Compson home, uh, kind of looking at all these events, which basically involve the deterioration of their family, which in some ways replicates the deterioration of the South after, uh, the Civil War and the mistakes uh, that are made uh, in the family, perhaps replicate the mistakes made in the South. I think it's a great, great book, but it is not an easy book to read. And if you don't want to read it, you don't have to read it. So that then brings me to the last point, and a point you've probably picked up on. You may be saying, you know what, you didn't have to go through all this list of books to tell us this, but I thought it would so I could be specific about the books. None of these books are books you have to read. You don't have to read these books. Don't read these books unless you want to. And you should want to because they sound interesting. You should want to because you like the challenge. You should not read these books because you want to say you have read them. And this is one of the things that appeared in a video that Cliff, and I, I referenced this in my Wednesday video, that Cliff over at Better Food said, don't read books so you can say you've read them. Read books because you want to read them. And so if you don't want to read these books, don't read these books. They're hard and you may not enjoy them. And if you're just starting off reading, this might kill for your love for reading. That's what would feel, what, that's what I fear the most, you know, uh, that, that, that would happen. You know, I don't think anybody starts off with the sound of the fury and says, aha, I'm going to read this as my first classic. And then, you know, are, are happy with that decision necessarily. Anyway, please let me know, uh, where you disagree with me, where you think I went wrong with this in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching.